Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to the tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter six talking about the test tool and automation where we are getting into the next subtopic that is 6.2 tool selection. As a part of this particular tutorial, we'll be understanding a lot of things in terms of understanding that what basically requires you to be uh, sure about in order to select a tool because there are a variety of tools available in the market and there are so many options that can actually sometime attract you and feels like that option will be the best option because it's most commonly used in the market but not absolutely fair with you your or your requirements now sometime it does happen that your requirements are something unique and there might be only specific tools available in order to make use of it and you do not have options. In that case, a test manager has to be very crucial in terms of selecting the right set of tool. But in case you don't get a tool in the market, sometime you have to create your own as well. Now that's what we'll be exploring in this particular section in a lot of subtopics. So this is the part one. We're covering the two subtopics of this segment that is the custom tools and open source tools. And the next subtopic will be covering return on investment and many other things as well. So there are a variety of different issues that a test manager must consider when selecting the test tools. And you can actually recall your foundation part to understand more about this. The most common choice historically is to purchase a tool from the commercial vendor. In some cases, that may be the only uh, viable option. However, there are other possibilities such as open source tools and custom tools, which are also feasible options for any particular organization. Regardless of the type of the tool, a test manager must be careful to investigate the total cost of ownership throughout the expected life of the tool by performing a cost benefit analysis. If you do remember, we had this point in the foundation where selection of tool involved a test manager conducting a cost benefit ratio in order to see that on a long run, will this tool be returning us the same benefit or not? We'll be also talking in our next tutorial about ROI, which is return on investment. To get started, the very first segment we are talking about is open source tools. Here we will be covering that what exactly open source tools are all about and how it would be sometimes beneficial, sometimes complicated for an organization to make use of it. Now, open source tools are generally available for almost any kind of facet at for the testing process, be it like test management or be it defect tracking or doing automation as well. And you might be knowing some of them on your own as well. For example, Selenium is one of the open source tools. JMeter open source tool. So there are a lot of such tools which are available for performing different kind of activities within the testing lifecycle and definitely you can make use of them. Now, an important distinction of the open source tool is that while the tool itself generally doesn't have a high initial purchase cost, that means you don't have to invest anything in order to acquire the tool. So tool acquisition cost is almost zero. Now, there may not be any formal support available at the same time. That means that the vendor may not be, you know, full-fledged providing you a kind of support at any point of time. You are free to customize the tool. You are free to make use of it. You are free to write your own functions and libraries to make use of it. But the vendor will not be held responsible for providing you a necessary support. Now, that time, that thing can basically sometimes become a drawback to the organization that you do not have a clear ownership who can help you if you get stuck. Many open source tools, however, do have a devoted following that it is willing to support non-traditional or informal support for the user. That means in some or the other way, if you write to them, they can always get back to you that what are the capabilities of this particular tool, which you can actually enhance by using some of the basic steps. One benefit of using open source tool is that they usually can be modified or extended to their users. If the testing organization has the core competencies in order to modify them, the tools can be modified to work with other tools or change to fit the test team's need the best. Now, of course, that's the amazing benefit of having an open source tool that it can be modified. That means you can make use of your own libraries, you can make use of own uh, generic functions and jar files, and you can drive the way you want it. So sometimes it is another benefit why organizations choose to go for open source tool is basically to customize it and meet the specific uh, expectations or requirements what they have from the tool and that you don't have in a commercial tool. So that's where the commercial tool can be very rigid, very stagnant, and you don't have a provision to further customize it. 
except the basic settings. But open source tool completely allows you to the way you want to drive it, what kind of application you want to work, what kind of objects you are dealing with, all sort of things can be actually addressed. Multiple tools can be also combined together to solve the problems that a vendor tool cannot address. Of course, the more tools used, the more modification made, the more complexity and overhead will be added to the process. So you must be prepared being a test manager that if in case you're looking forward to do a lot of modifications, there are a lot of headaches which are going to come into. So you must be well prepared for that. I'm not saying that you should not use it. It's not a drawback. It's just that you should be well planned and well prepared for it. A test manager here must ensure that the team does not start using open source tool just like for, you know, just making use of it, that you have got an automation tool and you're just making use of it or just for the sake of using it. As with the other tools, the effort must always be targeted at deriving the positive ROI. As far as the tool is returning you some benefits, you will make use of it. If you think that more than the benefits, you are spending your time in customizing it or creating the environment or creating those generic functions what you need to run that particular tool, you are not having a good return, you can stop using that tool or probably don't even adopt it. So you must have a great calculation powers in order to estimate the usage of the tool as well as determining the overall return on investment. The test manager must understand the licensing scheme of the selected tool. Many open source tools comes with a variation of GNU public licenses which specifies that the distribution of the software must always be under the same terms as it was received. So there are a lot of aspects of the licensing as far as you do understand about the tools. You can take a call on this and you have to declare that you are making use of it in several other places. So you know the protocols of making use of open source tools or open source code. So if you are making use of any open source code and you're making any kind of modifications, you declare that, you know, I'm trying to make these modifications to your tool. So the vendor must be aware about it. A test manager should check into the legal ramifications of redistributing the software within their organizations or within different unit of their organization, which is another important aspect as it is an open source tool. Now organization which develop safety critical or mission critical software or which are subjected to regulatory compliances may have issues with using open source tools. While many non many open source tools are, are of very high quality as well, the accuracy of any given open source tool has likely not been certified yet. That's the reason you don't find much certifications or much you know accreditations on the open source tools. So putting it all together, being a test manager, you should take a call on making use of open source tool which will help you the best if in case it's not going to you better go for something more precise also to add in this particular tutorial we are talking about the next segment which is custom tools which are also called as in-house tools that means there are no such tools which can be completely reliable upon or you can say that you have to do a lot of modification as we saw in the open source concept. So probably the time taken or time consumed in order to do that modification to meet your exact expectation from the tool would be higher than the return on investment. In that case, you prefer to make use of your own tools or you call it as custom tools or in-house tools. Now, but for that, you need a competent team in order to write up and create a tool. So there are a lot of product based organization in the market today who makes use of their own custom built tools and they do not completely rely on any outside tools except some of the things like Jira and all Jira and ALM <clears throat> which are basically for the task management but rest all of their activities be it static analysis be it automation testing be it managing of a lot of codes and other things they make use of their internal tools. So. The testing organization may find that they have specific need for which no vendor or open source tool is available. Reasons may be proprietary hardware settings or platform which you're using. Your complete setup is completely independent and does not deals with any kind of external environment. A customized environment or a process that has been modified in an unusual way and probably nothing else suits you which you are actually finding in the market. So in such cases, if the core competence exists on the team, then the test manager may wish to consider developing a custom tool and you can go for creating your own tool, but you need to have a team who can actually do that for you. It's just not that simple to create a tool which can be really accurate and precise and gives you that return on investment what you invested in order to create that tool. 
So the benefits of developing a custom tool is, of course, the number one thing is that the way you want it, you can create it. And the main reason you want the tool for can be very well established or set up. The tools are used, <clears throat> the uh, benefit of developing the custom tools are the tools can meet the team's need precisely and can operate efficiently in the context of team requirements. The tool can be written to interface with other tools in use and to generate data in the exact form needed by the team. Now you know a particular tool which you are already using in your organization and you want to do some kind of data exchange that is interoperability. Now interoperability can very well be established if you are building up your own tool because you know what exactly you want this tool to do with the other softwares which you are making use of. So custom build tools can have really great benefits as far as you have a great team. In addition, the tool may have applications in the organization beyond the immediate project. However, before planning on releasing the tool for the other projects, it is important to review the purpose, aim, benefit and possible downsides first. Because this is a very common protocol which we learned in the foundation that you do not roll out if the tool to the entire organization at a time even if your pilot project was successful. Because it might be possible that for your project, it was amazingly uh, good, but not for all other projects in your organization. So you need know, to make sure that you know everything meets the expectations uh, of the entire organization and other projects as well. A test manager here must consider creating custom tools, must also consider the possible negative issues which can arise from that. Custom tools are often dependent on person creating the tool because he is the one who or he or she is the one who knows everything about it. Therefore, custom tools must be adequately documented so that they can be maintained by others. And if this is not done, they may be orphaned and fall into dis disuse when the tool creator leaves the project. So that's a higher dependency or something which is completely dependent on the person who has created and if that person quits the organization, it is completely non-usable product. So you must have to drop it and you have to look forward to something again from the market or recreate the tool. So that's where you should take care of that like it's not a dependent tool on somebody and you should have proper documentations and there are multiple people who are trained on this or like who know what exactly is written behind the screen so that they can take care of it even if after one person quits the job. So here the test manager should take care of that as well when it comes to custom build tools. Over time the custom tools may have their scope expanded beyond the initial extent. That means initially uh, you may build the tool for only specific reasons. But as you grow slowly and you want to make some more activities to happen with help of that tool, you can always expand it in order to meet your expectations. And there's always a scope because it is your custom build tool, in-house tool, so you can always modify it the way you want it. So it may cause quality problems in the tool leading to false positive defects report or creation of inaccurate data because not every time the integrations are successful so whenever the scope is expanded not the initial purposes can be still met sometime it may become complicated and difficult the test manager here must keep in mind that a custom tool is just another software product and as such is subjected to the same sort of development issues as any other software product so make sure that when you make your tool, you do conduct the precise level of testings before you make use of it. So general, you know, unit testing, integration testing, system testing, performance testing, and all other applicable levels must be conducted and made sure that whenever something is being added to the existing tool in order to enhance the features of the tool, then it must be tested well before making use of it. Because your software tool which you are building is just like any other software which you are testing throughout the testing process. Well, that was all to give you a quick idea between the open source and the custom build tools. I hope you got a great understanding of that. We'll be getting into the root of uh, return on investment in the next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.